What is up guys, it is Nisho here, and today I want to talk to you guys about three spell chop card removal cards that you may or may not be using. And uh, yeah, so spell and chop card removal is something that has always been good in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, spell and traps have always been annoying, you know, around uh, Zexler into uh, Arc 5 era, spell and chop cards became used a lot less and less because the game became a lot faster a lot more decks started relying on speed and the game kind of went to a point where it's like you outspeed your opponent before they outspeed you it's all about making boards and gaining advantage now so uh, a lot of back row has gone into the back burner but we do still use a lot of good back row like some decks still use lost wind um, a lot of decks still use solemn strike even dimensional barrier so there's a lot of cards that you know still can hinder uh, your own potential at going fast or playing the game at a very fast pace and so we although we do still have cards to deal with that like twin twisters and cosmic cyclone that not only get rid of back row kit but can also prevent certain cards from uh, getting their opponent an advantage like tanky or uh, draconic diagram uh, we also have you know a lot of cards should just help get rid of like back row in general like for uh for those back row heavy decks that really do focus on hindering their opponent as much as possible and uh a single twin twisters or a single cosmic cyclone won't cut it maybe a tornado dragon but you'll have to dedicate uh resources into that and if it gets uh striked or something you'll be stuck with uh you know of wasting all of that just for that card to get striked so what I have for you today is three spell and chop card removal cards that you may or not may not be using, or three good ones uh, that I think you, that I suggest that you may or may not be using. So, the first one is uh, one that we already have uh, that has been around for about a month is uh, Zafion, the Time Lord. So, Zafion is a water level 10 Time Lord monster. And what she does, it, it is a she, is that uh, you normal summon her when you have no monsters. So, pretty easy summon. A lot of decks these days don't really need their normal summon. Or if you're a deck like True Dracos, where you can just double summon as, as many times as you want, pretty much. Uh, so, she can't be destroyed by battle and can't be destroyed by card effects either. And you take no battle damage either. So, that, that's the reason why she has zero attack. And what she does is that at the end of the battle phase um if she battled an opponent's monster you get to shuffle all your opponent's bone chop cards back into the deck only your opponent's not yours and you know it's it's kind of like it, it, as long as she just survives that battle phase it's like your all your opponent's back row gone back into the deck. You know what I'm saying? It's like for some decks that can really hurt a lot of strategies. There are a lot of decks that do keep spawn chop cards face up on the field, you know, and use their effects in uh, continuation. And then like shutting that down and like stopping that uh, can really hurt their momentum. And, you know, for other decks you know, it's like where they just set cards just so they can have them there. You know, like you, it, it really does cut a lot of um, a lot of your opponent's strategies. It has the potential to cut a lot of strategies while also getting rid of cards that might be problem cards. And Zafion itself having uh, its own protection allows it uh, to be less susceptible to back row that your opponent may have to stop it from just uh, using its effect in general. Like you, like you're just normal summoning one monster, and all of your, and all, and all of a sudden, your opponent knows that they, uh, that their back row is pretty much grass, <laughs> like, uh, and it, it, it's it's all gonna go back into the deck. So they're gonna dedicate resources into getting rid of it. So either they're gonna put so much into getting rid of the card, or the card's gonna get rid of all the back row itself. So that is definitely why it is a pretty amazing card. It's not as hard of a normal summon. When, when I say it's hard, it's like as effective as of a normal summon as Denko Seka. 
but it does still have that potential without forcing you to uh, conform to the rules of not being able to set either because you know that's what Denko does so yeah the second one I wanted to talk about which we did get in the starter deck link strike was link slayer so the level 5 cybers type monster the new ultra rare that we did get in the starter deck is uh, pretty amazing so if, if you control no monsters the level 5 uh, your opponent doesn't have to control anything. You can still control spell and trap cards. It's just if you control no monsters, you special summon them from your hand for free. So, uh, I was thinking about this card, and uh, I was thinking, you know, like this card could be a Gofu side deck. So, if you're using Gofu in your deck and you face a deck that really uses a lot of back row. Uh, you can side Gofu out and put Link Slayer in because they'd kind of have that same use and are the same summoning condition and then just use Link Slayer's second effect which is once per turn you can discard a card to destroy either one or two spawn trap cards on the field so if you're and you know that's something you can do every single turn you know it's not just once per duel or anything it's just every single turn you can show Link Slayer drop one, pop two spell and trap cards. So your opponent is definitely going to want to get rid of it because if they don't, it's going to be a big problem card. Especially if they if they uh, are playing like a back row heavy deck and they rely a lot on their back row. It may not be a quick effect, but it can still uh, make your opponent lose a lot. You know, it, it, re it really gives you uh, a big advantage. Over over like back row heavy decks, so your opponent's definitely gonna dedicate resources into getting rid of it. And yeah, so that's why I, I do think it could be a real amazing card, and you know it being a side deck for Gofu with the same summoning condition, easy to summon, doesn't use your normal summon. Uh, you can use it in like uh, combo decks. You can use it to make link summons after you use its effect, or you know even before if you feel like doing that. Um, but, you know, obviously, if, you, if you're just going to link something, you might as well just focus on keeping Gofu in. But if you know you're facing back row heavy decks, it can definitely be a real effective card against those. So the last card I want to talk about is a Heavy Dust Storm. It's coming in Code of the Duelist now at this point in the video. Uh, well, when this video is made, Code of the Duelist is not out yet. Tomorrow is the sneak peek. Next week, the actual box comes out, so... It's not too far away, and it's only going to be a super rare in the set. And it's a real amazing card, because uh, it's pretty much like Twin Twisters without the cost as a trap card. So it's just a trap card that you just activate, you target two up to two spell trap cards on the field and destroy them. The only real downside is that you can cannot conduct your battle phase that turn. Now, with it being a trap card, you are allowed to use it on your opponent's turn, and the whole battle phase clause just isn't even relevant at all because you used it on your opponent's turn and so you don't have a battle phase that turn it doesn't say next battle phase it just says the battle phase of this turn so you know that's that's really like a little loophole um around that condition and it being a trap card it, it could be a quick effect um you know obviously it may not be as fast as something like twin twisters or cosmic cyclone but um, it definitely, if you feel like you need more back row removal, or if you feel like you need back row removal that you don't want to discard for, it definitely is something that you should consider, especially if you're using a deck that likes to go first. Because if you like going first, then, you know, obviously you're not going to be worried about your opponent's back row on first turn. But if you, you know, you set it down, you can bluff your opponent, and uh, into thinking it's something like real strong, like a Solemn or something, and then they draw, they activate something like a Draconic Diagram. You can either activate it then to destroy the Diagram and pretty much negate it, or you can save it for their end phase and they set multiple cards and then you activate it and then you pop their multiple cards, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it definitely has that same versatility and use as Twin Twisters, just with all the cost. And that is makes it a good candidate for spell and trap card removal in your deck. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh has gone to a point where it has gotten very fast even in even with the new link rules 
uh, the game is still at a point where it feels like they, like some games only last a few turns. So chop cards aren't really favored that much by a lot of people, even if regardless of how good they are, because they take a turn to use in general. But uh, it doesn't mean that they're bad, and you know I'm pretty sure that in your testing you can find out which of these cards you can use. If you know Twin Twisters and Cosmic Cyclone isn't good enough for you already. Now, um, in the next ban list, Harpy's Fetter Duster does have a chance to come back simply because they have it in the OCG and it's doing fine there. But um, over here in the TCG, we don't have it yet, and it still is kind of like an open book. Like, we don't really know if Konami intends to bring it back or not, so it definitely is still something that can happen, but I don't, but, you know, my, I would just say, like, don't expect it. Like, don't, like, don't get your hopes up too much. Just work with what we have now, and uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. So, this was Nisho here. Nistro out.